six months ago, I decided to treat myself to a set of golden open slow drying acrylics. And the reason that I did this is I used to paint in oil and acrylics and gave up on oil because of the cleanup and the smell. But gosh, I really love the effect you could get with oil. And I've been looking at some of my favorite artists recently who paint in oil. And I've just been longing for that soft, blurred edges that you can get and so I've been using a little more of my stay dry additive to my paints but thought I'm just going to try these paints and see what I can do with them. When I first got them in, the first painting that I did, I did not like them at all. I put them aside for a long time, but I've just recently picked them up again. I saw this little photograph of this potting shed and some fresh corn coming up and thought I'd give it a try. If you'd like to watch me paint this and get my take on these paints, stay tuned. So I made a mistake with these right out of the gate. I assumed because these have a slow dry medium built into the paints that the paints would stay wet longer on the palette and that there was no need to use a wetted sponge or to wet my paper. This is a Masterson Stay Wet palette box. I did not put a sponge underneath and I did not wet the paper first and that was a big mistake. And my paints got very dry towards the end. They did not stay pliable, they dried out. And so that would be the first thing I would suggest to you is treat these, preserve these as if they were regular acrylic paints. I'm using the Rosemary & Company Classic Long Flat Brushes, which are just one of my favorite brushes. They, they just have such a soft end to them, and I'm using cobalt and white, and I must say, right out of the gate, there is such a difference in the way these handle from regular acrylic. Everything was so soft and blurred, it was almost, I'm so used to painting with Liquitex Heavy Body Acrylics. The way these handle is so different from that, it took me a little while to kind of get my sea legs with this. Um, things were blending a little too much. I wanted to keep things a little more separate, but I really enjoyed putting that sky in. It was just super soft and it, it's just the look it's hard to get with, with regular acrylics. And I felt like this was as close to using oils as you can get while still using acrylic. So uh, I love putting in the sky and that was a good experience. It's interesting as I watch this video, um, I feel like I probably over blended that sky. I wish I had left some of the clouds and shadows a little more distinct, but you know, there are a million different ways to do a sky, and I think it turned out well, and I was really pleased with the results. Here you'll see me mixing that viridian green with some yellow, and I'm putting just a little bit of red in just to dull it down. It's, it's a really strong color. gave a nice kind of earthy background color for these trees. I like varying the darks that are in the back as, as much as I like to vary the lights. I think everything is more interesting when you've got a variety of different colors and values. But I think it's sometimes when I have my heavy body acrylics, I default to my sap green. I call it my beloved sap green. I use it all the time for darks. But because I didn't have a sap green with this group, um, it sort of forced me to mix some other greens and I think that was a good thing because it, it forced me to mix some different shades of green with some different tones and I think when the, all was said and done it was more effective having different greens dropped in that background. Here I'm dropping in a little bit of phthalo blue, which is the darkest blue I have on the palette, to darken that green up. Normally I would have ultramarine on my palette. I did not have an ultramarine in this set. I can't remember now if this was purchased as a set or if I bought these colors individually. The fact that I'm missing colors that I would normally select makes me think it must have 
been purchased as a set. It was probably a lot cheaper to do it that way. It's probably why I did it. So now I'm dropping yellow into the chromium oxide green to get a, a medium value. I really encourage you to get your dark super dark. Things just look so much more believable, more interesting. If you if everything's kind of a middle value, the trees and anything else you're doing can look really flat. But I love getting in some super darks, then some medium value, and then get some, getting some nice light highlights on top. Adding a little more yellow as I go up. Putting a drop of that orange in there just to warm that and tone that a little bit. I'm used to using CAD yellow medium and this was a much lighter, cooler yellow. So again, it just um, a different palette that I was than I was used to using, but it was good. You know, I have found that I tend to use the same colors over and over, and my paintings tend to look the same as a result because I'm using the same greens, I'm using the same blues. So it was a good stretch for me to use some other colors and experiment a little bit, and uh, I think that was a good thing try to get some interesting shapes as you get to the top of those trees. Turn that brush. We don't want to just have round balls at the top. For the building, I decided to try the red and I was going to dull it down with a little bit of the chromium oxide green. And after playing with that, I decided I didn't like it at all. <laughs> so I switched courses. Here I'm using the three primaries a red, blue, and a yellow. And I'm going to add some white to it to get a, a neutral gray tone. I needed to do two values for the shed. I needed the front of it where the light was hitting and then a much darker value for the back part. So I'm about to run into one of my problems with these paints. And the first one is that open doorway into that shed was very black. And I, I just had trouble with what the paints that I had on my palette, getting something dark enough. These paints, when the paints that are a little bit transparent, they seem so much more transparent than my heavy body acrylics did. So it was very difficult for me to get a real dark dark to go in that doorway. I finally ended up putting some, I had some Payne's Gray in that group, but even that was not super dark.
Here I'm using a little bit of that transparent red iron oxide and, and dulling it with a little bit of green and putting a little yellow to lighten it up. That's where I would normally use burnt sienna to get in the dirt in between the corn rows. My paint was really dry by that point. It was really dragging. I wish I had wet my paper. I'll do it next time. If I was using the heavy body burnt sienna, I would be getting great coverage at this point. But with this transparent red oxide, you can, you can see you're seeing the canvas through the paint. It's just taking multiple coats. It's a beautiful color, but uh, definitely transparency is an issue with these paints. Here I'm mixing some Viridian and white, just getting a nice background kind of green. I'm dropping it in in the very back in front of those trees, just letting you know that it's pushed back in the distance a little bit. Now I'm mixing a real fresh, strong, bright green using my cobalt and that light yellow, almost a fluorescent green. Turning that brush, getting some different strokes in. I must say the vegetation was one of those areas where I really enjoyed having the paint with that much slow dry medium in it. It, it felt more like oils as I was just laying in different greens and the way that they mingled together and the edges were so soft. And it was just a pleasure doing that part of the painting. Again, just kind of burying the greens. I love the contrast of that bright yellow, vibrant green in front of the trees that were dark and were dulled out with a little bit of red in them. It's a nice contrast. Add a little bit of white to my paint, just putting some tips on the tops of those plants, just showing some highlights, pulling my brush up, getting some different heights, getting some texture there really nice with these paints. Putting in some darks in the front, just giving you a sense that they're highs and lows. That cobalt I thought did a nice job of giving that illusion. And, and again, it was nice not having sap green on my palette because I would have been using it right there. And I think that was really lovely and soft and you, you still got a nice um, variation and you got that dark, darker green edge, but a different palette than what I'm used to. Liked it. Just getting in some texture, turning that brush, using different greens.
This was probably the best part of the painting as far as the benefit of having this type of paint where I've started using very thick paint and just started laying in small strokes going in different directions representing that vegetation on the top of those rows and it was just beautiful I really enjoyed it and I think it was just a an effect that would have been difficult to get with regular acrylics Here's a place where you can pull those darks up in front of the lights and just give great texture. And I like it, easy to do. If you follow me at all, you know that I really love a lot of color. And even though I had all that beautiful color in the sky and the foliage, I just that, that building, that, that gray was just kind of getting to me after a while. So I decided I'd go back to that pinky red and see what could be done with that. Now I'm adding some of that cobalt to the red just to darken that up and give us a nice deeper shadow side of that building. Here is where I pulled out the Payne's Gray to get dark enough darks in the windows and in the door. So here I'm using that red, transparent red iron oxide and probably the burnt umber together on a, on a small little flat brush, just turning the brush, dropping in some layers of darker darks, 
trying to get some texture so this looks like soil. This little section in front is where I'm going to put some baby corn stalks that are coming up. And so seeing the dirt there was going to be important. Just turning that brush, getting just different colors on the brush, letting that original thin layer of that red oxide shine through a little bit. Here I'm using a little bitty angled brush, putting some thick paint on it to do these corn stalks. And this is where I really ran into the most problems of this whole painting. It just smeared, it wouldn't, it wouldn't lay on top of the paint that was below it. It just kind of dug through the layer that was on the bottom. So I decided to get a hair dryer out and to my delight, that hair dryer, it, it dried very quickly and that completely took care of the problem. And I felt like that knowing that I could use a hair dryer on this, unlike using it on oil paints, um, made this paint type of paint even more flexible. Hindsight is so great, but as I'm watching this painting again, I wish I had left more of that dirt showing in the foreground. I thought that was really beautiful at that stage, but I just couldn't leave it alone and kept adding and adding. I'm using a short little liner brush and just using a, the yellow and the white, a little bit of green, putting some just abstract little flowers in here and there just to add a little color and interest and texture to that area next to the building. And why not a few orange dots, right? <laughs> I didn't like the flowers going around the corner and ended up going back over that but you know sometimes you just need to try some different things see what looks good don't be afraid to paint over anything I paint over things all the time this is unusual this painting that I haven't really painted over anything <laughs> that's usually just part of my MO with painting but I think once you get to where you're not afraid to paint over something, then you're not afraid to experiment and try things. And so what if it doesn't work? Then you haven't lost anything. You just paint over it and do something else. So I have found that to be a very freeing way to paint. Funny. Again, it's interesting to, to paint something and then to watch the film of it and see things that you would do differently. As I went back over this with more layers of that dark paint, I feel like it almost made it look a little too harsh and a little too solid. I thought it looked a little softer and more of a little beat up building before I just kept messing with it. And I'm real bad about that. I, you know, I, I encourage you to work on a painting until it looks good to you and then take your hands off it. I'm, I'm bad about wanting to keep touching it. And I love having multiple colors of things, but I think sometimes I keep fiddling with something and I'm, I'm really trying to uh, just stop when the, when the painting says stop. I'm trying to be obedient to that.
now I'm using that small liner again and I'm using predominantly white with just a touch of yellow and green and I'm just sort of skipping across the top of those plant rows letting you get the feeling that they're uh, there's light hitting it that they're cabbage heads or whatever those plants are that there's something some activity some growth going on there I've got a tiny bit of, of orange in some of those strokes just just warming that up just a little bit just turning that brush putting down some different strokes it's where it's nice having that darker uh, green beneath so you get some sense of depth to it Here I'm using that same mixture, uh, a lot of white, just a little bit of yellow, a tiny bit of green, and I'm just adding some highlights to the tops of those trees, turning my brush, using some really low, loose strokes, and not overthinking it, just, just dropping in some lights here and there. Again, I, I think using this type of paint really helped keep those edges super soft and um, I don't know what went wrong with the first painting that I did using these paints that I just disliked them so much but I'm glad I picked them up again and this this painting has been a joy and a delight and I'm real pleased with the way it turned out and I love how soft it is and yeah I'm pleased with this one going back in and just doing the darks, touching those darks one more time, just dropping a few dark spots back in. You know, sometimes when you work with a painting for a while, you can lose some of the darks and the darks are what give it form and drama. And I love a lot of darks in a painting. So uh, just dropping a few things, dark spots back in really helps that building jump. I hope you've enjoyed this video and my take on these open acrylic paints. If you want to know more about me, check out my website. I'll put a link in the description box below.